So every time I've gone to shows, I've watched certain people, not even people just in my team, just yeah. people in general. And I pay attention to everybody. I'm like, oh, how much better are they? Because that's what I want to be. Can I ask you a question, Los? Uh, eight inches. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. Like, <laughs> hey, what'd you think of that? Rate that, uh, rate that. That was, uh, that was a great show. Right are you uh, verified? No, I'm not verified. Speaking bro. of verified, uh, guys. <laughs> What do you guys think about the verification? Because I was just in Anaheim this past weekend, April 2nd through the 3rd. And we were having a discussion with Babyliss. Uh, shout out to my homie Hawk. We got Dennis. We, I mean, we had a whole table of the crew. And everyone was so against it. And I didn't understand why. I, I saw their point of view and their angle saying like, oh, you know, they're just making money off you. And one day they're going to drop a gold check mark. And then that's going to be the official verify while everyone's just paying for the blue one and all that. And my argument was, I get your angle, but you're already talking so far ahead. Where right now, today, April 5th, not a lot of people know that you can pay for a verification. Mm -hmm. So two things. One, I still get the perks that one would have when you were verified the, the original way where people still don't know, so it's easier and it helps my business. And two, I become verified, meaning that if somebody comes across my work or or anything that I've done, no one can replicate my page because my page is actually verified so that they know it's me who they're talking to if they're trying to book. So if you're a business owner or somebody that's doing some type of work through Instagram or, or any type of platform, Facebook, it's good to be verified because as a business, it's basically saying it's you. Now, I do understand the cloud chasing and why people that probably have like 200 following who probably don't even take a social media series that are verified. I can see that angle. But I guess I'm going to just ride the wave until until the gold check marks comes out. But Los, what's That's your input or Ruben? What's your input on that? I mean, bro, just so, some context. We're both verified, right? Like yeah. we both pay for that. And then... Ruben, have you? Are you planning on it? Ruben said, no? fourteen ninety nine is no. too rich for my blood." No, it's not that, bro. It's, uh, dude. I, I got. I'm gonna wait till I do some cool shit, and um, I think there should be a minimum. I feel like the two hundred people follow you, like that's lame. But I feel like they should still have that. You have to have a minimum of ten k followers. You gotta. But, but does the following make you? What if you were a celebrity, right? What if you became that man, like yeah. somehow Dave Chappelle runs into you at a bar. Yeah. Or he sees your stand up and he's like, "Yo, Ruben, you're a fucking. I'm gonna make you come on board." And now you're verified because you're with Dave Chappelle, right. but you only have. But, here, but here's the thing, Los. I'm yeah. gonna play devil's advocate, right? Because okay. like I know we're both for it, but I think I need to play a good role that I think is a good reason. And that role is like thinking about it as in like, oh, you, anyone can get it now. So it's like once you get that thing, that's like so not a lot of people have. Once you eat, once it's easily accessible then there's like no point to it in a sense where like the value in it is not really there. But yeah, right, long run, the, yeah. the reason why why we have it, I'm sure it's for security. And that's why I I really appreciate the the sense of like professionalism a profile has. And you know, but that's pretty much like some of the arguments. Ruben, you're not against it, are you? Not necessarily. I just think there's just there has to be some type of uh guidelines to it um but i understand Los's point this feels like you know um I, followers don't mean you know as much but i feel like to be a public figure or anything like that or either a business people that's gotta where, know you yeah right and so um i mean even if deja Chappelle puts me on and nobody followed me in this day and age it's very it's very like Following is important, I feel. You know what I'm saying? Because as far as when you get booked for anything comedy-wise, your following does play a big part in what your rate, what you could charge for yeah. your rate. Um, and as of recent, like I started to get more booked for private stuff. So, you know, that helps a ton when they know they can rely that you can post it, you can bring people, you know, in as far as promo. And I don't know, it just, it's just thinking about, it's just being known as well. But, I mean, to each his own. I feel like whoever did do that, like who brought it up in Instagram and said, hey, let's follow Twitter and let's let people buy, you know, the blue check. I think they deserve a raise because this is the perfect era to, to for clout chasers to purchase that. That's um, you know what you I'm see saying? The numbers? Bro, they make. Oh, dude, they're, 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 they sold 44 million blue bro, checks at their the stock, yeah. Their stock, bro. <laughs> but it's going to be a, a pump and dump. People are going to do this for two, three months and then a lot of them are going to fall off. Yeah. Um, but as far as you guys, I feel like y'all should have been verified. That's different. 
you guys are, are are already goats in your own lane. I feel I just I just talking about like the rapper with nine hundred people, nine hundred nine hundred <laughs> followers talking about oh I need five thousand for a feature because I'm verified. Well, mm-hmm. you know. Well, I, I get that right, and you know I I can appreciate you because you're you're very modest. You're like, I'm still I'm still getting started. Why why would I pay to be verified when you feel like you have to maybe reach certain personal goals? Yeah, you to feel like. I got that. When it came to me, dude, I mean, Instagram itself, the page, Instagram, the page posted me twice. I've been on news. I've been on magazines all over the world. I've been, I've been out and about, and they still wouldn't verify me. I was sending links. I was sending all mm-hmm. these, you know, they require all the stuff to sign. Yeah. Nothing. And what I don't understand is that I got in communications with somebody from Instagram who first reached out when we did that. That full head of hair with the collab with Ray Ban. Yeah, Ray Ban. We did a, a meta and Ray Ban collab, and Instagram reached out. One of the guys that worked for him, he ends up following me. I end up following him. Mm-hmm. He got his own private account, and I'm like, yo, I gotta ask you, bro. Like, I'm entering everything. Like, I don't understand what it is. Like, even the fact that Instagram itself posted me with my yeah. information, meet Barbara Carlos Estrella, like all that. Yeah. And then I just couldn't understand. So. I feel like I should have been verified a long time oh, ago. Oh, definitely. But but the argument in Cali was everybody was like grabbing me like, Los, you are already verified. You, you're you verified with us. And I get that. But you got to understand, the perks are still there right now because it's so new. People don't even know that you can pay for it it's right now. Yeah. Maybe later on. Maybe. I don't know. But right now. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm curious. If it's like the actual check bar will, yield, will still yield great results from the verification. I think so. But then, like, you're right. Not a lot of people know that you could do it. Have you guys noticed so. anything positive about it so far? Like, as far as being ahead of everybody in the algorithm? It's a I mean, mind, my, I, though, I, here's me. the thing. I, I I just came from Cali, and I dropped three posts, haircuts, fire, mm-hmm. and they all did really good. Now, was it the work or was it the blue check? I don't know. Mm. But no, I also it was the work, like, bro. Like, think- let's be real. Like, you fucking <laughs> snapped. Bro, yeah. did you see his story? Like, oh, yeah. The, the- bro, that whole, man, I, that's why I... I'm Thank excited you, to go with hair shows with y'all, bro. Especially being with Lowe's. Like it's different. If I'm in there, I still get noticed, like from the podcast. Bro, it's but crazy. if I'm with Lowe's, bro, bro, I'm gonna be like, "How about this? Shout out to, ah, uh, forgive me if I remember. I don't forget your Les Beats. I think she comes up to me. Uh huh. She was like, "Hey, Lowe's, whatever. I forgot how she started, but she was just like, "Man, by the way, I love your podcast. It's my favorite thing in the world to do. When I'm at work, I just put my headphones on when we're doing inventory. I just listen to that." This and this and that. And she's just like really like telling me how much she enjoys Hell it. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, that's what's up. And then before I leave, she's like, by the way, tell Ruben I said hi. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm like, I got you. Ruben's going to love that. So oh, I'm what's up, Ruben? Hey, give me the app, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but the cool thing is, is like while we're here shooting and we're just doing our podcast because I think we all enjoy it and we're not necessarily chasing like all oh, this I mean, we we hope that it does great at one point. Yeah. But we're just doing it because it's very therapeutic for me. Uh, yeah. But for people to come at me and say, like, yo, that's one of my favorite things in the world to do is to listen to your podcast. It's like, whoa, that's so dope. And then top it off and say, sh- say what's up to Ruben? Yeah. I was like, jeez. Hey, no, bro. And uh, speaking of Cali, we get a lot of love out of Cali. Uh, United Barbers Club sent me this. And uh, Hey, man. Hey, Big shout out, bro! How did they? How did they like send you that? Because you're not you're in the mix, but like I'm in the the mix, bro. I'm in the mix more than I think people know, dog. Because I was at the Midwest Trade Show, bro. I I kept getting stops. I think because people feel people feel like Ruben's more reachable. Were you hosting at? Oh yeah, that too. Uh, What's up? Were you hosting at? No, no, I did it at the sneaker bar. Did a little comedy before Mm. for the uh, Midwest Trade Show, but no, and that's the thing too. I'm definitely way more reachable than Los is. I'm sure his. Inboxes and in this other inbox. You know how you got two other inboxes? Yeah, I bet you know. I, I do it. I, <laughs> hey, one day, Los, can you let? Can I see? Look at them. Just let me. I want to. Oh, bro, I'll bro show hold, you. On, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, bro. For real, for real. In one ep- next episode, if people are cool with it, I want you to let me look at your other two inboxes, and I'll, I'll pick out the funniest ones. Like you know, just messages? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. uh, dude, I think it'd be fun, uh, a fun concept just to look because I know people are gonna be begging and asking Los for shit or. Anything like that. So um, it'd be crazy, bro. I've gotten everything from foot pictures. Let me buy your feet pic. To um, I'm a I'm a, a a barber in a foreign country. I need to move to America. Can you help me? Yeah. To to bro, just every from, I got princes trying to give me to write checks to them. Like you know, like oh, all yeah, the fake was, stuff, yeah. like scam. Spam. Yeah. I stopped getting the 
Blue check verified messages. Oh, the oh yeah, oh, the, the, yeah. The leaf to that to avoid those. Bro, those are hilarious, especially when they comment under your post. Yeah, yeah right. Like, hit me up DM to get verified. Or check yeah, or, I be, or, yeah, or send like, pick to so yeah. people are punching the wall right now. Well, the verification. Ah, uh, bro, I know a lot of people are because, dude, there was a way to finesse it. And you'd have to pay thousands of thousands of dollars. Hundred percent, yeah. Because some people will put you on these fake articles. I mean, dude, and most would tell you a good story. What, what recently? Oh, happened. guys, I mean, some of you guys might be able to learn from it, but so check know. this out, right? <clears throat> and I don't know if you know, Ruben, you probably know. Um, a couple weeks, uh, a month ago, give or take. Yeah, a month. I got an email from somebody who saw an Instagram video, who ended up getting a haircut from somebody I know. So it, it kind of it was full circle. He emailed me very professional. He's like, hey, I know a guy who can get you on news articles, get you on podcasts, get you on TV. We love your work. We love your video. He's willing to work with you. I'm like, cool. You know, one of the one of the things I love doing is I share a lot of stuff that I get and I send it to Carlos. I'm like, what do you think? You know, fishy, not fishy. He read it. He's like, see what's up. So I reached out. We had a, ended up having some type of Zoom call meeting and ended up being, ended up being a PR. Um Somebody that can, you know helps your career and puts you out there, and we had a meeting after that a week later, and they they created a whole like, um, what's the proper term? PowerPoint. It's like a PowerPoint, but they call it something else. Presentation. No, it's a, um, a deck. They created a professional mm. deck, and they had like my social media on there, all the things that could go down, and what they could help me with, and being on news and podcasts and. And all this stuff. And it seemed pretty cool. I was like, damn, they're they're talking about in three months we can get you all this and you you possibly get verified. And I was like, all right, cool. You know, how much are we talking about? And it ended up being like fourteen thousand if I paid um in payments, but if I wanted to pay up front, it was like twelve grand cash. Well not cash, but twelve twelve grand up front. And I was swear to God I was ready. I showed it to Lowe's. And we we're going over, and I was ready. I was really contemplating because I'm a man. Twelve grand not only would it get me verified, but it would put me on all these news stations, all these podcasts, put me on TV. So I, I, to me, it was a business move. But I want to let me let me hear about it first. So he ends up doing all this research. We go to their website. Um, part of it was on the construction. We try to like look through people that they helped out, and, and those people. Didn't really it wasn't I mean break it down Lose. What did you see that you kind of gave me the red flag? On? I mean, bro, it's just when you're paying that much of a high ticket price, you at least need some type of sources or receipts or or a name will pop off right away, right? Mm -hmm. But it was just with these things, you just have to like tread lightly. And being around so many people that do that, in a sense, with like when I travel to Miami, you know, have a couple people and influencer friends that have you know done that, but just that in of itself looking at the actual source. And if you're someone that does that, it'd be nice to see like your website set up professionally. Um, some like maybe some reviews of some people that who's actually done it. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that what we're looking at. Familiar. Reviews, no reviews. And um, also Instagram, like I looked through the Instagram, I tried to find any like social media and I couldn't really find it. We didn't really find it. Everything page. was under construction. So it was just like, you know, you're asking for a high ticket price. You, you got to have receipts, bro, you know? Yeah, no receipts. And then a week later, I shit you not, Poppy's, uh, Poppy Blends becomes verified. And not only does ver <laughs> not only does Poppy Blends become verified, my homie Randy, his video. Shout out Randy. Shout out Randy Shout becomes out Randy. verified. <laughs> and I'm over here like, what? So I, this is before I knew that you can pay. Uh -huh. So I hit up, instantly hit up Poppy Blends. I'm like, nice, bro. Like, you know, congratulated him. Dope, what'd you do? He's like, I dropped like three grand on a PR. So instantly, I'm like, three grand? I'm like, man, that's not bad. That's dope. What's up? Let me send you the three grand right now and make it happen. And he's like, LOL, bro. He's like, you know, you can pay for it now on, on IG. And I'm like, what? And, I, and at the time, I couldn't do it. It didn't give me the option. And then one day, Carlos comes and he figures it out and we, we got verified. Leading back to square one, why we chose to get verified. Because I think as a business, as, a, as someone who gets booked, vice versa then it just it just it's a cleaner look especially now that it's still so new so if you're against it i think it's more of a personal thing yeah, yeah. i mean i don't know maybe i'll like i don't know maybe i'll probably take it off in like six months i really don't right, know it's kind of like if it yields great results cool but if it's one of those where like 
kind of Instagrams being like shady. They you were, to like pay to play. They were they they were on me. Like yeah. Dennis is like that's one hundred and eighty four dollars a year, and I'm like, well, I will just, I'll just do one more haircut then. to write it off. <laughs> write it off. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I said. I'm hey, like, that's that's a nice flex. Just, I just do a cut, bro. I just do a cut. Pick for the year. Cut. Yeah. And but they were really trying to get me to see their point of view. But I think, and and you know, Hawk Dennis, with all the respect, I think. I understood their point of view. They just didn't understand that I understood that. Because I, I was like, I get what you're saying, but you're not understanding what I'm telling you. And they, they would just be like, Lo, just admit it, man. You're just verified because you, you want the clout. You want the clout. And I'm like, nah, dude, fuck, fuck the clout. It ain't got nothing. It's just like, it's just a good look. It's a good business look. Especially for people that don't know that you can pay for it. I would say it's hard to say that to a person like you, though, bro. I feel like... If you wanted to chase cloud, you would have been chase cloud. But you, you don't chase cloud. You, no, I don't give. Yeah. I, don't, I don't. Bro, with all the, I don't want to be famous. I really, yeah. I really don't. I just want to make. Oh, money. I know, bro. Because even when you get spotted on my comedy shows, it frustrates you. So, <laughs> like, I yeah, can't imagine. Yeah, it's not really right or wrong yeah. point, bro. This time, yeah. I think it's just we'll see how it plays. You know, yeah. and, if and, when I get ten k followers, I'm in that bitch. But where you at now? I'm at six. So. 6K? Yeah. So. All right, guys. We need. We're gonna get. You 10K. can grow like crazy with reels and TikTok. Yeah, bro. I just, I just gotta. Uh, Start making money off comedy, then I can alleviate my nine to five. And what if, what if, dictate the what if you getting on. getting your personal brand right and just like just pushing out a bunch of reels and TikToks can get you those high ticket uh, commissions? What you mean? Like <laughs> you can get really high, you can get paid more if you got a better following and you got more like to back up your work in a sense. Yeah. Is that a question or is that a? You're like like so I'm confused. saying, like <laughs> if you were to to grow your brand, which were you know to kind of get you yeah. a little bit more professionally set up, right? Yeah. You got a good following. Now it's like your prices goes up, right? Because yeah, of course, you got more of like a yeah more leverage. Yeah, definitely. Now I'm able to dictate prices more than anything. Um, obviously, for these smaller showcases, I'm not charging them an arm and a leg. But if it's a business. Yeah. Now that I've realized it, if it's a business and if it's a private party, it's different. Yeah, but if I know, if, but if I know if if it's a private party, it's a different price. If it's a price that they want and they're gonna sell tickets, so they're gonna try to make money off me, it's a different price. Right. So I've been learning that because I was charging the same rate for everything, and I was like, no, because if they're gonna profit off of me, then you know what I'm saying. Where to where a private party, it's all just gonna be like a family or something like that. They're not charging anything. So they can't profit off of me. I totally for a guy, bro. You're just starting out, but like you're such a beast. So it's kind of hard to tell because when it, whenever I see you up there in the spotlight, when we have these shows, like you're in the zone, bro, and you just like smoothly flow from like. Oh yeah, nah, bro. I've been so I've, I've been so touched. I, I've been so focused since the beginning of the bro, year, bro. Keep going, like, man. Me and Los are on the same page, we'll man. Like, just now. seeing you from like <laughs> in your zone, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, overall though, bro, you're. you're Anaheim trip with anything cool you saw that you brought back or anything you didn't like or anything like that? No, nah, Anaheim was cool. Uh, Anaheim just opened my eyes to what the rest of the year is going to be. Um, I was able to study, pay attention to what I needed to fix as far as education. But overall, I just wanted to leave a footprint in that show, and I did. I did a sick ass piece that that um, a lot of people were like, "Whoa!" It was a showstopper. That's what they called it. Uh -huh. That's my goal. Every show I do, even Chicago in two weeks, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna try to do show stop. I'm, I just need to. Bro, the thing is, is like the work isn't the issue. It's finding mm -hmm. models, man. I need models. Anyone that's willing to get anything cool. The stuff I did today, I'm gonna share it on here. We got shout out to my homie Chris Palace, who's, um, who's a special guest at the Raul Alejandro concert here in Chicago tonight. They're touring. We did his hair today. We snapped. I'm gonna put some of the footage right here. But by the time this episode drops. The real will probably already be on YouTube and on Instagram, but I mean, what did you guys think of that? Did you see it in person? No, so he just he I just showed it to you. Yeah. That was fire. What you think? Yeah, been that's like what, a fresh eye. That was made. That was my first time ever doing flames. Yeah, ever. That's it. I looked at it. I thought of Poppy Blends because his his shit is well, flames. Well, you know that's Poppy Blends' client. Oh no! Yeah, yeah, that's Poppy's Blends client. Okay. And then he came to Chicago, and then Poppy's like, "Yo, he hit me up yesterday. Yo, you need to cook up Chris." And I'm like, dude, I'm going to that concert. And he's like, yeah, you think you go to the arena early and and do his hair there? And I'm like, fuck, because when it comes to doing that type of hair, dude, it's not just doing it. You have to bleach it. Meaning yeah. make it all white, yeah. strip it, repaint it. It's, it's just the whole structure, and that takes hours. And I'm over here like, okay, well, if I get there early, I got to go ready because yeah. I'm not going to go to Rosemont, come back, get ready, yeah. go back over with traffic. 
So I'm contemplating. I finally get on the phone with him, and he's like, bro, I'll get to you in the morning. So he came here at 11. Yeah. We knocked it down, and he came out fire. I'm excited to see it on the big stage. And oh, it's going to be lit, yeah, bro. It's going to look dope, man. Man, that's exciting, bro, to see it work. Uh, yeah, we were even thinking about, like, content ideas because, I mean, he just hit me up, and he's like, hey, bro, yeah, I have uh, – he's going to come through. We're going to do, like, a sick hair. And I'm like, all right, fuck it. And I just skipped the gym, and I just went on over we here. Hell, yeah. Because you never know, right? We're, I'm in my 20s, yeah, so it's gym like too, bro, you just yeah. got to have – you got to run with, like, all right, fuck it. Yeah, and, and if I could get some passes, bro – Right, and then we'll see what happens. And if it happens, it happens. If not, we still got a sick video. Out of it. <laughs> but like I said, bro, I, I don't care for that. Like I don't, uh -huh. I don't chase trying to cut celebrities. I, don't, I, I really don't care for that. But um, it's just a good look too, you know. Yeah, it's of course, bro. I'm able to do an artist, and he's big. He's coming up. Yeah, guy. I hope, I hope you get content out of it, bro. Because oh, we already got fire. Dude, yeah, oh, I'm saying got, like, like at like the videos. performance, bro. I mean, you got the Pro Max now, so yeah. I, and then I got some good seats too. So yes, I, I, think, I think we'll be able to. You know, nothing zoom in can't help. Yeah, hey, Losa, that's, that's a that's a Losa, really great thing. Zoom in, huh? Plus, uh, it was a uh, all seat arena, right? Yeah, I got some has some pretty solid. It's not like yeah, yeah Rosemont's very uh, out of stadium wise. Rosemont's very intimate, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not like the United Center. Rosemont's like a little barber battle arena. Yeah, <laughs> it's nah, like I, do, hey, yeah, I saw. Would it, you compare, what would you compare Rosemont to, like United Center? Like oh, maybe, it's, it's half the size. Yeah, it's half, half the size. It's, it's, I, yeah. I, I would say one thirds of the. No, time. no, no, it ain't that small. I, I'd say one thirds of it. I remember when I went to go see wrestling for the first time. Now, mind you, uh -huh. growing up, I was a big WWE fan, yeah. like big super. Until my dad was like, "That shit's fake." Yeah, and then it threw me off. So when I finally went to my first ever WWE event, it was Raw is War here in Chicago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know anyone, and that was. But I was just excited to be like, "Damn, I'm about to go see this shit." Bro, I walked in, and I, I just couldn't believe how small that arena was. Mm -hmm. But on TV, it looked huge. Yeah. And I'm like, damn. As a kid, this would have been amazing. It just sucked because I didn't know anyone that was coming. Oh, the spider is coming out. Like, who the fuck? Damn. Oh, I got to go to one of those, bro. Yeah. You ever seen a, a wrestling? Not not live. It's, it's, it's cool. It it's so much smaller than you think. Yeah. It just sucks they because... they host most of them uh, like in small venues? Or is it like United Center ticket? It depends. Like WrestleMania was at a big one. I, I, I don't know where that was. But these was in LA. These, Hollywood. These, some of these like events are like the magnitude is huge. Like they'll be hosting in like Dubai or something. Yeah, like, it's huge. Bro, it's listen. huge, bro. So yesterday we were, I, I just got, I flew in yesterday, right? So I'm in LAX getting ready to fly out. And I'm just hearing cheering. Mm -hmm. like, if, like if it's a fucking championship game. And I'm just like, what the fuck? I got my headphones on. I'm taking them off and I'm looking around. And I see a bar, because you know the the airports they got like oh, I don't know if you know Ruben they got they got bars at the airports, mm -hmm. like restaurants, and I'm hearing cheering and clapping and woo and I'm like oh I wonder who fucking who's playing, I get up and I start making my way over there, these guys bro there was over forty guys at this bar, all coming from WrestleMania from Sunday. And then they were watching Monday Night Raw. Oh, hell yeah. The very next day. <laughs> yeah. They're all flying in. They got their WrestleMania shirts. Yeah. Grown ass men. Like, I'm watching this. Now, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know what it is. And I'm not bashing people that watch because I used to be really big into it. But once I realized that it was like kind of like theatrical, it was like more like performance, entertainment, I was like, oh, I ain't got time for that. I, I just kind of went over there. So, but watching these grown men get excited about it. And, and the what's crazy part is like the whole time no one was wrestling it was just people on the mic just dissing each other yeah and then when one dude hits the other guy everyone cheers like ah, yeah. like a like a basket got scored and uh -huh. it just blew my mind i was like damn that's crazy that people are still into it like real grown men are really into it it's huge bro yeah. it's so it's like a, an event like that it's so grand and like just putting on a show and 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 storytelling there there's so much that goes into it that i've learned with just like yeah. To other people have you ever been into wrestling? I know you're. Oh, no. yeah. Were you Ruben? Oh yeah, wrestling. Is dope. Did you have remember the toys? The, the bro, ah, uh, I had all the action figures, dog. Did you? Yeah, dude, my parents. You were rich growing up. I don't know. Nah, man, I was spoiled. I wasn't rich, man. but <laughs> you spoiled, man, I didn't have shit. Yeah. It was cozy, Ruben. Nah, was cozy. my parents. They my dude, my dad had three jobs. My mom had two jobs. They were grinding, you know, mm -hmm. just to make sure we had everything we needed. But dude, they they yeah, wrestling toys, bro. Christmas. Yeah. I had the the I had the, uh, I had the I had the ring. They had the I had the arena. To, uh, this motherfucker. Like he, he, he had the he had the referee action figure. Bro, <laughs> it came with it. That's the issue. <laughs> I had Earl Hebner, bro. That's the nah, thing. For real? Yeah, I had Earl. Hebner, bro, it came with the you set. Got the ladder and it had the, the I had the pay per view action figures where it had the Kane and Undertaker. It had the Rock, Stone Cold, Rikishi, Alden, bro. So 
Yeah, it, it was good times, bro. But Chris was, yeah, we'd always get all of that. But that's crazy how, like, these, like, figures and, and names are able to make such huge name for themselves even after wrestling yeah oh like yeah john cena and the rock, the rock like especially bro, the rock. It's, it's it's insane yeah. especially and, and, the rock. and how, how are they able to transcend outside of wrestling right I, and that's something that i've been trying to like do with us like yeah how, how can, can most cut it trans transcend outside of uh hair and expand the audience just, just expand that yeah expand the audience while, while we're in the to topic of uh wwe did anybody see one, did you, anybody see how UFC and WWE Emerger, are going for it? Yeah. But two, did you see how Vince McMahon looks now? Oh, he looked Puerto Rican, dog. I, 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 <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God, bro. Let me. He got a mustache. Carry bro. on this conversation while I find his. Bro, it does not look like Vince McMahon. <laughs> and he got a mustache now with all this color. Yeah. You saw it, Ruben? Do you, yeah. you, you know what Vince McMahon looks like, right, Los? Give me some context. You know what he looks like? I don't. Oh, my God. I'll oh, use that laptop, bro. Pro, you know get what? a picture of him, bro. Watch, yeah, I'm, I'm going to show you. No, Los, Los is looking at it. I'm going to show you a bit. All right. <laughs> so this is this is the Vixen man that I remember. Let me. Well, this is when he was on steroids. <laughs> right. And I'm gonna show you a picture of his face, though. That that was like a real of what what I remember. Um, and then I'm gonna show you what he looked. So basically, this is what Vic, Vince McMahon looked like, right here. Jeez. Right. That's him. And then I'm gonna show you what he looks like now. It just goes to show it's crazy how yeah, yeah, I've seen him time before. flies yeah. and, and then we just get old. Now this guy got color everywhere, bro. It was insane. What you think, Ruben? He looks Puerto Rican. Look at him. He looks like Theo, Theo. <laughs> you see that? But in the video, like you can tell, man, whoever did his color, man, whoever did his eyebrows, man. his mustache. What's going in? Like it was just the color was so off. It did not look natural. And you're talking about Vince guy. Is he a billionaire yet? He's he is a billionaire, be, yeah. He, got, he has to, no? I like mean, Vince. All, the, all those years, bro? Yeah. Vince, man. Get it together. And then how about that? Speaking of the McMahons, did you see Shane Nimmer? Oh, he got hurt <laughs> doing the his leaping joint. Yeah, bro. He, he looked good. Hey, he came out and he was yeah, doing his little shuffle. Yeah. And I was, like, good, yeah. I was like, damn, Vince, he's old as hell, but he's, he's, I yeah. can't do that shit. And he gets in the ring. He he starts doing this jump, and I'm actually gonna. I'm, can we put the clip? You think? I think you could screen record and just throw yeah, and put the clip. Couple so seconds. Uh -huh. He throws somebody in the rope, uh, it, like seconds after the match started. He throws the dude in the rope. Dude bounces off. He does a the fucking hop. It goes under his. Like, he does a hop. The man goes under. Yeah. And then as soon as he lands, bro, he just he, he, just he stretched out his hamstring, and so they had to like do a. They had to just do random. The Snoop Dogg came. He just had know. Snoop Dogg and beat up Snoop Dogg. Yeah, he even did the Dogg. fucking people's elbow. Shout out Snoop Dogg. He saved Shout the day. He hey, saved bro, the show. How about Snoop Dogg when he tried to go on the rope? The rope didn't even bend. The, the, <laughs> <laughs> the rope literally just pushed him. Did you see yeah, that? Bro, bro, yeah, I saw it. Oh, it's bro. crazy how much, like, Snoop Dogg has his hands on, like, everything. Bro, Snoop Snoop he's, like, he's like young Samuel bro, Jackson. Respect Snoop Dogg is so, like, intelligent when it comes to that because bro he announced the olympics dog like he was an he announcer announced for the olympics? olympics yeah with kevin hart and maybe yeah and, kevin hart yeah. is someone you can relate to oh too, kevin hart is a is a is a go bro he's he, he has his hands in almost everything now too and uh man it's just seeing those guys and the way they they put everything especially now like even look at bad bunny he's a wrestler now too you mm -hmm. see him bro yeah, just bro yeah. he's just but he's not even just i'm not even trying to say like he's one of those people that just wrestle one time and they look decent. Like, no, he looks amazing wrestling. You know who else looks amazing that just recently joined? Oh, Jay Paul. Logan. Jay Logan, 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 Logan. Bro, Logan. he ziplined through, like, the entire um, stage. And it was, like, it was his birthday, I think. No, you don't want to know what's he even more, what's ahead, more amazing is that none of us had tried Prime yet. He ended up. He <laughs> bro, did you see? Bro, did that's you such a great uh, promo. Yeah, oh my, the marketing. Bro, he's so smart. He drank Prime before he jumped. Right. And then he fucking landed on yeah. his. That's prime it. Guy. I'm, buying, I'm, buying, I'm, buying, I'm buying a Prime today. Bro, that's so intelligent, man. He's so smart. Because I'm pretty sure he added that to his contract that he's able to advertise his drink when he wrestles. And that is smart. He literally drank one and then he did a freaking frog splash on top of the dude. Marketing, bro. You got to strategize. Love it, that's, bro. That's the way to do it. I love you that know? so much. But you you never been to a wrestling wrestling? Never. Movie? Bro. All right, next I time they're in Chicago, sure. I got you. Oh, we Wait, slide them, bro. They come. Never. No. Have you guys noticed? What? No one ever comes to Chicago. Yeah. Like, what's up? No, 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 no talent, bro. Ever comes to Chicago, bro. It's so weird. Maybe because well, Chicago? like realistically, what do you mean? realistically, there's L.A. and then there's New York, and then now and it's Miami. Miami. And Miami. Like, but like Chicago is like barely making it. Like, I, I think I feel like. People, artists, celebrities come to Chicago because they have to because it's a big city. There's right. money to be here. Mm -hmm. But no one ever comes to Chicago just to come to Chicago. It's those brutal winters, bro. Yeah, and we got brutal. Bro, 
And the wind that just knocked out the power today when you were doing haircut. Yeah. Oh, yeah, literally. I was doing this guy's haircut and the damn wind knocked. It's horrible. But it just sucks because I feel like if I would be in L.A. or Miami, I would have more access to a lot of this shit. I mean, I've never been a UFC fight. I've mm. been chasing a UFC fight, but they never come to Chicago. Would you do Pro-Am? Would I do what? Would you ever do a Pro-Am match? Pro-Am? Like, like it's not UFC, but it's like locals fighting. Would you ever go to one of those? Yeah, I've, I have. Okay, I used yeah. to cut a few MMA fighters. But I want to go to the UFC, bro. Yeah. I want to know who's fighting. Gotcha. Hey, let's go to the Ryan Garcia fight. Fuck it. Wow, dude. I was literally about to just <laughs> bring that, that topic up. Yeah, bro. I was literally about to be like, so what about Tank and Ryan? Oh, let's go see let's go see Ryan Garcia win, bro. You know what? I'm gonna tell you like this. I'm <laughs> hearing that tickets are not that expensive. Maybe I'm not talking about ringside. Let me I'm, check I'm talking about regular. And it's in Vegas. But it's April twentieth, and I think my family's gonna be here. So I don't think I could go. What's up, Los? Are we going to do a party here or what? I would love to. Wait, go. we're in April already, right? Yeah, it's April 5th. Right. What's up, Los? I'm going to be in Vegas. You're already going to be in Vegas. Yeah. When, when are you going to be in Vegas? Oh, the, uh, you, 15th, the week before the fight. 15th, yeah. yeah. You see? And then my family gets here that week. What's up, Los? No, I can't do it. You want to stop by? Man, Vegas? I can't. And skip the ABS show? Level oh, 3 will kill me. There. Imagine just pull a fucking after. Oh, wait. that's Yeah, that's like. ABS is Saturday, down. Sunday, yeah, Monday, bro. Who you got, Los? Tell me. You know what? I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I think deep down, I feel like Tank Tank got it. But Ryan has been doing a lot of talking. And not talking, like talking shit. He's just been talking about how prepared he is and how mental right. sharp he is. And and after looking at his highlights, bro, that hook that he has is so deadly, bro. Mm. And after watching Tank's fights, you can see where Tank's open a lot. But... Tank, I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's literally 50-50. Do I plan on putting money on it? No. Nah. Because I like to enjoy my fights. I can't be stressed out about losing money. I want to just watch the fight. Who you got, though? You have a good time? Yeah. I don't know how people I don't know. Bet. I don't know much about Tank, but the maturity that Ryan has will definitely help him out in the ring. Um, just because, he, you know, he really is very, um, in a sense, more like mentally ready. I'm sure Tank is, too, but... I don't know if it's on par with the maturity. That but you gotta Ryan understand, has. Ryan hasn't been in a ring in like three or four years. Yeah, it's been a minute. Yeah, and and, and Tank has been he just fought. Yeah, dude, I, they're so, both beasts, but you know they have their ups and downs. I know you're a big fan. Keep of, his uh, ticket is six seventy two, and that's up there. Yeah, and at, that's at and MGM. That's, and no, that's at the. Uh, oh yeah, um, MGM. Yeah, freaking yeah, six seventy two, and that's in the Boondocks, bro. So what's up, Ruben? No. <laughs> unless you got passes for us, dog. <laughs> Ruben, Ruben's like, unless you got it, unless you got me. All right, let's go. <laughs> nah, I ain't blaming him, but yeah, I, th I think I'll tell you what. If Ryan wins, it'll be dope because, like, it'll just literally all that shit that that people just doubted him all the time. It'll just put him up there. Right. But if a Tank wins, it'll be good. For, it'll be great for his career. But I think it'll just be like it was expected. Like right. people knew, like, okay. You know, I think Tank got it, but we'll see. It's gonna be an exciting fight. I will be paying the eighty four dollars because a lot of people be like, "Why don't you go on this website and, and you can watch it for free?" But then when the fight comes, it wants to just glitch and yeah, you and jump off, yeah. Bro. And then TikTok will be going ham on the right. pay per view, <laughs> crazy. But uh, what what else is new? What's going on in the world today? Donald Trump got a, 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 a arrested or what? he got arrested. Yeah, nah, but yeah, what's up with that, uh, Ruben? I know you were telling me about. No, nah, he bro, he's gonna be out soon, bro. His bail, he gonna he's gonna be straight. Right. You know, Ruben, you read this them. is an inside job. They're trying to silence him. I think so. Yeah, because the thing is, is like they didn't even post his mugshot. They didn't even do anything like that. This is a whole. But the thing people got to know, he's not going to a jail. Jail. He's going to one, one of them nice joints that yeah. you get. You know what I'm saying? That you <laughs> get a nice jail. bed. The the you know what I'm saying? Like a retirement. Yeah, yeah pretty yeah. much, bro. So I don't know what they're trying to get out this man, but I feel like they just helped his. Is is next election? This is all. All it is is gonna it's turn people up, up. And, and you know what I mean. So it's not what people think it is. And um, on top of that, bro, it's like people worry about him a lot and focus that not even like especially you know Latinos. We a lot of us voted him out, but we also got to think like, what is this dude that we got in right now? What is he doing for us? Oh, and bro, you know, a joke. you know what I'm saying. So. And, and the thing is, the only reason we voted for him is because we didn't want old boy in. But um, not speaking for all of us, you know. Did you saying? vote? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, and um, 20-something 20, 20 
36 years, Ruben, I've never voted. Damn. Yeah. I just, I d- yeah. Does it, does my vote really count? Yeah, it does, Los. Does it really? Well, in a sense of like in the macro, you know. Does anyone feel just, like the 2020 election got was robbed? Nah, because. You think so, Los? I mean. Let's hear your theory. Did you hear about that spike at like four in the morning? Trump was up and then we all woke up to Biden up out of nowhere. And where do those ballots come from? Now, I don't want to speak on it because I'm not too knowledgeable. I just, you know, I, I do a little bit of research and I hear about things and I'm like, damn. But I didn't vote. I just, you know, like my guy, my guy, Turo says it like this. One of my clients, he says, I don't vote because it doesn't matter who's president. It doesn't matter who's in office. It doesn't matter who's this, who's that. It doesn't change my situation in life. And I was like, ooh, that makes a lot of sense. But you don't think like whoever's in, in office, like, for example, I mean, I'll say it now. Like financially, you weren't doing better during the Trump years, as far as like. Hell yeah, I was doing better. Than so Trump. I mean that that put it in perspective. I think it does affect everybody, um, on what on what area you at in life because obviously each president favors different um median average salaries. Um, I feel like it it Trump favored the one percent versus Biden favors more towards the lower income people. You know what I'm saying as far as taxes, as far as um perks is you know during tax season and whatnot but I, I don't know even like looking at this now i mean I mean, i'm from the birds but then i just saw um brandon johnson just won uh the mayor election and it was it's a similar concept bro it's either you go for the guy who's gonna help out the less fortunate or you go for the guy who's gonna help out the the higher end you know what i'm saying the the, and the thing is a lot of people were complaining too about uh mayor villa losing but dude he Boy never stepped in Pilsen. He never stepped in Little Bro, Village. you're like a great Bro, advocate, right? The fact that you nah. know all these names, he's dropping names. And I'm yeah, just like, I'm <laughs> saying I'm like, Ruben, are you a politician? Like, No, I, no I'm Ruben's not. I just, I, no, okay. I just, I do. I like Chicago, bro. I, I like, like part of the Illuminati, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just like Chicago a lot, bro. And so I like to be kind of informed of what's going on here because I do make money here. I do do a lot of my business here. So, like, I try to, I try to be knowledgeable on what's going on. So... Mm um and like i'm in chicago four or five days a week so at that point it's just like i'm almost damn near a fucking citizen <laughs> over no, here you know to, it's great to have so, you have but yeah no nah, man I'm, I'm just you know what i'm saying like i said the whole mayor race uh one side never touched the latino neighborhoods and one side they were all they were all up in there so that's crazy so yeah. uh, a ver que pasa, you know, you know, i pay zero mindset it's, it's insane i think I, I should but it's just like what's real what's not what's fake what isn't yeah but I mean, at least we have somebody on the team that is focused right. on that shit. <laughs> for real, there you go. are you gonna run for mayor or what? What's up? Nah, you wouldn't run. Nah, I wouldn't, bro. Cause dude, you're the bad guy regardless. <laughs> You'll True. never be the good guy. Yeah, you can't really please every, everyone. I feel in like any every, field. I feel like there'll be a elote man everywhere, <laughs> every corner, tamales everywhere. That's crazy. Or chata everywhere. Yeah, bro. <laughs> It'll be the Ruben or chata. <laughs> uh, that's crazy, man. Well, what's new in what, what's what, uh, what's new in your world, Los? I mean, oh, dude, I'm excited for the show, bro. What show? Yeah, you. Um, there's this like tech show, like broadcasting, which is my first time hearing about it. But DJI reached out. They're like, "Hey, are you gonna go to this show?" I'm like, "All right, you know, let me look up the show. Thanks for putting it for my attention." And I just like looked at my computer and just saw all the um, stuff that was gonna be there. Sony's gonna be there, mm-hmm. obviously DJI, and you know, I'm sure other tech companies. So I think it's. You know, even though, bro, I hate to have to miss the show for ABS because, I mean, we've been doing that show for what, like two, three years? Man, it just, it's just since day one. Yeah, since we but met. I think it's like, I think you're in good hands, Los. And Cali proved it, right? You just yeah. using your phone for content. And that's what's up, bro. Cause I got you, bro. Oh, yeah, we got Ruben. Uh, of course, Ruben. Ruben's I got the pro match, the bro. I'm going to bring the team. You know, I'm, I'm sure JC will be there. Um, we got Ricky. We got. Um, Average panda. Oh, bro, say. you're in good hands, 100. Yeah, we got and Bobby dude, I'm always open to like looking at. Stuff oh, Bobby Blends like, slider. Yeah, all level three slide. Nice. So we might have a few. We're gonna keep this podcast set up, and we got. Speaking of level three, I mean, we got everybody from Allison Cuts coming, Barbara Benji, Sky. We got uh, A Rod, Bobby Blends. We got Gucci Platano. We, got, I mean, the whole squad. Plus, there's gonna be other major names in the industry that are from working that are working for other companies that are here. Oh, bro, content central, dog. <laughs> now it's either it's, it's gonna be kind of tough because it's either we film all those episodes and just just go crazy that whole. Bro, weekend. let's knock out season two in one weekend, bro. Fuck it. I'm sure we can. It's just gonna it's gonna be tough because one, I think I'm gonna have to buy another memories um stick just to keep 
adding on there. And if we can knock out four podcasts, I'm happy. I said let's knock out the four and take a I week. I definitely want to get Addison Cuts in here. Addison is, I'm actually going to call her right now and be like, hey, book it. So I think she gets here Friday. If we could knock that Friday. We already had Gucci Platano. We had A Rod. Um, we want to get Cheddar in here. And I'm, I'm, I think Diego is coming. I'm going to have to reach out to him, Diego from LA, if I can get him. I'm going to just try to get people we haven't had and just shoot this shit with these people. Uh, that's, that's next weekend, right? No, not next this week. weekend. Next weekend. The 21st? No, the 15th. 15, 15, yeah. 15 and 16? Yeah. That's not, not, that's not this weekend, right? No. I'm you got any no. good shows coming up, Ruben? Uh, the uh this weekend, which will the, by next week will <laughs> this will come up already? Yeah. But yeah, I have a couple at the Red Room, and then I got my joint, my buddy. So it's gonna be fire. It's gonna be good. Nah, man. Speaking on yours though, bro. Tech, that's gonna be lit. So dude, yeah, I think you're gonna be I, with I you have to have friends that are like in separate uh type of industries because yeah. you really get to appreciate all the facts and knowledge they get to kind of teach you in a sense. Oh yeah, right? like that's why I, I say Los keep abroad. And I'm sure you learned a lot from people from LA, the LA trip. You learned a lot from different people. And it's nice. I'll tell you what. And I'm trying to, I want to make this very, here's the thing. Since I've transitioned away from the chair, this is the first year that we've been just fully just content creating at HQ and being around you and being around Ruben and all these different industries and all the growth from doing podcasts, all the growth that we had from doing the master classes with Barbara Josh OP and learning. When I went to LA this weekend, and I say this very humbly, I don't I don't want it to come off wrong, but I, I've always gone to these shows where I'm not just, oh, let me shoot content, let me shoot mm -hmm. content. Cause I think everybody that got there got their own cameraman, their own photographers, their people, and their filming content. Which we gotta talk about. You were and, ahead and, of the <clears throat> Yeah, we were talking about that. And with me, I didn't bring anyone. I usually you bring you, I bring somebody to film me, but I feel like I'm past that. I feel like everyone already had their cameras in there, so I was going to get good content regardless. And now, more than ever, using your phone is good enough. So I was studying everybody. I was paying attention to who was doing what, how they were doing it, how they were educating. And I just felt good. I was like, man, I feel like I got way better and, and on, on a lot of things. So... It just made me feel good. I, I usually have gone to shows, bro. And I'm sure, Ruben, when you go to comedy shows and you see comedians that are just killing it, you're kind of like, it, it's it's um, it's kind of like a little, you size yourself up with them. Like, yeah. how much better are they than me? How can I get to that level, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. So every time I've gone to shows, I've watched certain people, not even people just in my team, just yeah. people in general. And I'll pay attention to everybody. I'm like, oh, how much better are they? Because that's where I want to be. Yeah. I didn't feel the this, this show this year. I watched a few people. Uh -huh. And even though I was happy with everyone that what they did, I still felt like I was top tier. Nice. And it was something that I've never told anyone. I just, I'm telling you guys now. Yeah. It was something that within, because, dude, if you think about it, for the past year, we've been grinding. We all been working. We've been getting better with everything. Mm -hmm. um, so that was just my, my thing. And then ABS Chicago was coming in two weeks. So now I'm mentally preparing for that. How can we show out? How can we create these looks? And how can we perform? I'm the... Like, like kind of like a creative director now for level three, and I'm setting up their stage slots and all that. So that's my first time doing that. I'm excited to do that, but it's cool. It's like we're leveling up in this motherfucker. So. Yes, sir. Can I ask you a question, Los? Uh, eight inches. <laughs> no, that, no, for real. Like, <laughs> hey, what you like, think of that? Rate that. Uh, rate that. That was, uh, that was a great joke. Liner. Oh, that was great. One through ten. Was, uh, I wasn't. It's, it's on the. It's the unexpected. It's bro. a solid eight, right? That's a solid eight nine, bro. It was, Let's give it a ten. Cause, cause he didn't say anything. He just said eight inches, bro. So <laughs> that's like you have to, you know, and exactly like he said eight inches. He had to say what he thought we were talking about. He could say eight inch hot nah, dog, eight inch whatever. Usually, bro, part of me I tell those I'm like you're so quick and witty <laughs> with like the jokes. Bro. Eight inches is dope. I like that. Make no, a good uh, comedian, bro. <laughs> I, I feel like if I if I did practice it for a few years, I'd be pretty good at it, but. <laughs> It was supposed to be, can I ask you a personal question? Usually that's when I hear that. I'll no, ask I wanted it. to get broad. Well, people would be like, can I ask you a personal question? I was like, personal. it didn't just... <laughs> <laughs> They're like, what? <laughs> that's so good, bro. Nah, go ahead. That's what's, so good. What's your per what's your Actually, question? both of you guys. Ooh. What's up? Now it's two of us? What's your... What's I'll, your I'll, I'll tell Lowe's <laughs> first. I'll tell Lowe's first, bro. What's up? Four. So what drives you? What drives you to get up in the morning and, you know, really reach out to people, network, help them out, like... Keep going. What drives you, bro? Hmm. What is it that thing in Los Cut It that looks up at his alarm, turns it up, and I like, all right, let's get this done. 
Oh, that's <clears throat> that's a really good question. What drives me? I think the idea of surpassing who I was and what I knew drives me. I'm always like I'm eager to learn. I have a I'm real big on learning something new every day. Like every day. Like even right now, I came to this podcast and I dropped a few things that I picked up in, in Cali, right? I'm always just trying to learn something. I'm always trying to get better. Like today we did the haircut. The first time I ever doing flames. I never do flames, but I did it. Uh, it that is like what fills me up. Like right now I did a new haircut. I'm like, man, hell yeah, I did something now. Opening that door, I can grow further and grow broader by getting more creative. But it's hard, man. I mean, I think I'm just a cre I'm just one of those guys, dude, that it's never gonna be enough and I'm aware of that. Right? Some people have a goal in mind, and when they reach that goal, they're content. And with me, growing up, I've always had goals and th places I wanted to be. And every time I got there, I was like, okay, what's next? What's next? What's, ne what's next? And I started feeling like, okay, I'm not, I'm never, ne I'm never going to be satisfied, and that's okay. But because I'm never going to be satisfied, that means I'm always going to be chasing greatness. And every time I chase greatness, if I chase greatness every day for a year, after that year, who knows what level of greatness I might, I might be. So I guess just chasing greatness is always what wakes me up every morning and and um, helps me do what I do. Because it's not easy. You know those. But to have one specific... Like, I don't have kids. I, I'm not going to lie and be like, oh, you know, my, my, my daughter, you know, my, my, my kids, my family. I really don't. My, what drives me is just chasing greatness. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Do you... Okay, this is another personal question that kind of rolls on because <laughs> some people may have it and i just kind of want to pick your brain a little bit do you think that ex let's say if you were to expand the family right let's say you were to get married and have family did you think that having that type of uh, route in life gets you any more fulfilled in life in a sense having that like as a mission as a core mission oh man it's so hard now it's because of the way the world is what i think you're talking about like if i had a family would that drive me to go more like do more? in a sense where like that kind of like changes your path or your direction where it's like all right i want to learn learn me 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 but now it's like all right, i got I gotta like look after it and build the foundation. Uh, I don't know. You know what I mean? Would that would that change your route? I'm I guess sure it sense? will. I guess I mean look at it like this, right? Um, when the pandemic hit, no one knew it was coming. So only like we we know you and I always say only real goats do this. Only real right. Goats. Like only the real ones pivoted. Mm. Like a lot of people complained. A lot of people backed down. A lot of people shut down because they were scared. Whereas in you and I and, and a lot of people that, that in the industry that are big or any industry, they just pivot. All right, we can't do this anymore. How can we pivot and do something else? So I've been really good at always, you know, hitting a dead end and all right, let's go backwards and let's go, let's figure some other way. So if I have a family one day, then I'm sure my work ethic, I'm sure my everything that I do in life is going to pivot to accommodate my family. But at the same time, I, I look at it like this too, like... I don't want to be with a, with someone who I have to take care of. I want to be with somebody that's going to help me grow and, 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 and like where they can provide their value too. And as a team, we can build together. I don't want to just be that breadwinner and I control this and I make the money and you stay home. And No, I, 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 want, I want a teammate, you know what I mean? Like a, a partner, a legit partner. So uh, like, for example, what I admire is like <clears throat> Yak, Mr. Official and his wife. My girl Jackie, she's flawless at makeup and does weddings and all that. He's obviously the barber. So right now they've been teaming up to do like bridal shower um, packages. Yeah, he saw she that. does. That's awesome. She does all the females and all that. He Mom, does the grooming. That's so, an amazing and, yeah. plan. And and that package, it's, it's a nice price tag. But to be able to do that with your wife, yeah, travel and do that and get paid, like that's what I'm looking for. It ain't just Mister Official. Or it ain't just Yak. Making the money and calling shots, bro. She's a boss too, and I like that. I don't want to just be with somebody. I and I've been in the past with girls that that I'll get I'll leave to work and they're doing one thing, 
and I come home after a 12 hour shift and I come home and they're doing the same thing. And I'm just like, nah, girl, like there's no ambition. There's no drive there. I can't, I can't. Mm -hmm. that, I don't care how fine you look. If there's no ambition, there's no drive, you have no goals. To me, that's ugly. Yes, sir. And that's it. That simple. It'll turn me off. It'll literally turn me off. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, bro. The reason I didn't want to like go into a whole tangent, but the reason why I asked that is because um, kind of goes back to the question I kind of ask you guys sometimes. In life, do you guys feel like as is, as if there is a right way? You know, like because generally thinking, I think for me, it's like there really is no right or wrong, right? Maybe. You, Let's say uh, someone were to have a family and then he were to take a flight to for his job and then, you know, the plane crashes. Like right. at the end of the day, you never really know. Never. There is no right or wrong. Um, but Ruben, I know I was going to ask you. I didn't want to leave you hanging. I know you had your answer ready, I'm sure. I forgot what I was going to say, so it's all good. What drives you, bro? What gets you up in the morning? Not liking my situation. How so? When I, I want to wake up to... Glass, glass walls, no, uh, see-through walls. I want to wake up to a balcony that sees the skyline of Chicago. I want to wake up to a nice little puppy. Maybe uh, <laughs> you're on that John Wick shit. <laughs> you're in the lifestyle, huh? <laughs> want to wake Having up to uh, what, what's the dog? That, hey, what's the dog that you have, Lars? Melo or oh, Boston Terrier? Yeah, I want to wake up to Mello. a Boston Terrier. You know what I'm saying? I want to wake up to my cameraman. You know what I'm saying? Good morning, making my coffee. And shit, you know, I want to wake up to you know. It's so yeah, like I said, it's just I want to wake up to a better situation, everybody. better lifestyle, better yeah, just better situation all around, bro. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously mentally, financially, all around, you know. Um, so that's what drives me. I mean, that's what I always try to learn new. You trying things. to have a family? Yeah, of course. Uh, I just think right now, um, like I think I'm a little too more too. I'm still a little too selfish with time to mm. to, to think about that. Um. But yeah, no, I'd love to to have a family one day. I wanna I wanna set a good foundation first, right? Because so, I think that's where a lot of people mess up. They don't have a foundation yet, and so they're playing. So people are like playing with the foundation, uh, you know, trying to grow it, and they never have the chance to grow it because never had it in the first place. So I think growing that foundation first and establishing who I am and and what I can bring, and and as far as like you know, financial especially, bro, because man. I can't even imagine the, the the grocery ticket that was on my head for every month when my my, my parents went grocery shopping. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> when they went grocery shopping, they're like, "Mijo likes these, 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 these." Let Mijo save some for the week. <laughs> I, I finish the groceries in like two days. And like, <laughs> nah, I, I got you know what I'm saying. There's just so much to think about, bro. It's not just mm -hmm. about having the family. It's how can you grow the family? You know. But eventually, you, you'd probably prefer a family. Oh yeah, no, no, definitely. No, no, Ruben, right now at this moment, would prefer it. Right now, yeah. I mean, but the thing is, no, I'm saying like, I'm saying yeah, family in the future. Right now, no, mm. I wouldn't be able to, bro. I, I wouldn't be able to. I'd have to give my kids my clothes. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, they gonna have to figure it out. You have to cut it, make it to their size. So, I want to be able to afford a family. But <laughs> I love the, that, bro. You're super a, humble, man. You speak humbly and gracefully. You know, I, it's a thing. I think it's common in most people, like. Latinos, you know, it's it's so so dope to see, just in general. Even with Rick, shout out to Rick. What about you, dude? Um, I think I'm in the same boat, but like right in the middle of the, between you guys. Because the reason why I kind of the reason why I kind of wanted to lead into this 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 way, it's kind of like have you guys' input in a sense. Where like I think as a man, my mission would be to provide for the family provide for friends and family, have a high network, learn, while also becoming that 1% man that I, I'm assuming, you know, most men want to become, mm -hmm. whether that is having strength, uh, finance, charisma, in all verticals. Um, I think it's, that's like really motivating. Like, like your 1% your man version of you is like right here. Yeah. And for you to wake up and really just put, all your your you're all into the day and just feel satisfied and in a sense kind of have that drive of like i have a mission to look out for friends family becoming that one percent i think ultimately that's what kind of really drives me is just to get to that you're point. on a mission yeah um 
but providing for family, of course, everyone has different types of adversity. And I guess that kind of helps kind of, it, it helps build that foundation to like where you really want to go. I get that. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's why I kind of asked you guys in that sense, like, what do you guys think about family and if, if that's needed? But I think I like to think of it as like, like back in the caveman days, right? Our only mission technically was to reproduce because yeah. we live and then we're, we, we were born to die in a sense. Oh yeah. But like, what are we, what are we here? I guess in terms of like legacy, if we were to leave a legacy, what would be the mission? Is for your, like, I guess in a sense, I think of it for your DNA to keep going, your family tree. And since I'm like the only man of my family, two, two sisters, yeah. then it's like, all right, I have a lot of like mm -hmm. weight I have to hold mm -hmm. on to. But yeah, I mean, not to get too too philosophical, but I just wanted to- You got a lot of testosterone to release into the world. Yeah, I, I You got to release that seed, Los. Dude, my mom bugs me every time. My, my dad, you know what's crazy? It's like- uh, every time I go see them, I, I, I know it's coming, and I don't know if they know, but I don't know if it's a thing about older pa about parents just always repeating themselves yeah. and not knowing they they repeating yeah. themselves. But I sit down and they just be like, "Me, you know, mijo también, think ten tiempo para para ti," yeah. and I already know what's happened when they said it. I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah of course." You know, cuando te vas a encontrar una muchacha y tener hijos you know, yeah. we wanted your grandkids like we got everybody older brother got a kid uh -huh. younger sisters both have kids yeah and i'm the only one i'm the black sheep in the family yeah and i'm just like look mom i'm getting to this money right <laughs> I, I just told my mom look one you have nieces you have you already uh, have you, you already got them <laughs> yeah two you guys it's not just a kid it's like i gotta find a mom <laughs> and it ain't easy nowadays especially yeah. someone that i want to have kids with and two, and three, I mean, it's just, I'm not against having kids. I'm just taking advantage of the fact that I don't have kids. Time, But bro. to you guys, it looks like I'm avoiding it. Mm. No, 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 dude. I'm not blocking the goalie. I'm not out here like, oh, I'm not trying to have kids. If, it, if it's meant for, and I told him, you know, my mom always drops like the, the religion on me. Yeah. So I drop it right back. Ah, <laughs> yes. If God wants me to have kids, I'm gonna have a kid. Right. Yes. But right now, it's just it's not. I, at, I'm about to be 36 this year. Yeah. And I was just talking. I was just talking to one of my clients uh, yesterday about this. I was like, you know what's crazy is like everybody that got kids will sit there and tell you how Ruben. I'm gonna need you to stop yawning, man. Sorry. I'm gonna, <laughs> <laughs> don't look at me damn Did you pull all nighter and shit or what? Uh, i'm tired bro <laughs> no, I hear you. tired of what well we're, we're about to cut this podcast short but let, let me let me just say this i was telling my guy yesterday he's like so many people be like oh you know I, would, I never regret so many people be like i never regret my kids my my kids are the best thing ever and this and that and i get it i'm like yeah i get that because you already know your kids you you, yeah, you, right. you experienced that but if you can go back to that very <laughs> day if i can go back to the day that i purchased my dog mellow would I do it? Hell no. Do I love my dog? I love my dog like it's my kid. My life, believe it or not, revolves around Melo. I have to make sure he's good before I'm good. I have to, I have to make sure, like, legit. Now, I can imagine having kids, right? Yeah. So I feel like a lot of people, if they can go back. Yeah, you might love your children. You might. I, I get all that. But if you can go back to that day and, and, and that negative could be, I mean, that positive could mm -hmm. be a negative some. I'm sure a lot of people get it, but people that say that those things to me, my response to them is like, yeah, I'm, I'm sure you love your kids, but have you ever been 35 with no kids and made good money? That's like next level adult because most people that I know that got kids got kids in their 20s, early 30s, yeah. right? And everyone that has kids, their goals be like, oh, what well, do you want to have kids young? So, you know, when they're 21, you'll be in your 40s. I'm going to listen, bro. When you're 20, when your kid's 21, they're not going to want to chill with you. <laughs> you think they will, but yeah. no. Nah. So the way I see it now is like, well, let me take advantage of not having kids. Let me build this empire. Let me make this money. So if it does happen, I don't have to work so much and yeah. I could be with my kid and raise my kid. But it hasn't happened. And I have a strong feeling I'm going to have a baby girl. Oh, yeah. I don't know why. I just feel like God's going to bless me with a girl, not a boy. And it sucks because I'm, me and my brother are the only guys from my dad's side that are like estrellas. Mm. 
And my brother got a kid, a uh, boy, Julius. So he's in this today. He's taking it over. But I feel like I'm going to get a little girl. You just going to have one? Bro, I don't even want one. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that crazy, though? Bro? Hey, like, don't stop till you have that son, bro. Like, bro, I'll be that guy that's like 60 or 50 years old. I'll have a kid. I don't care. Oh, but you're not going to be alive. I don't care. Uh, right. I got this one. life insurance bro, probably going to take care of it. It's like you don't have any regrets. Like you're living your life. You're traveling. You're working. You love what you do. And it's like. That's a life with no regrets in terms of like lows, you know? Mm -hmm. You know what I realized that's crazy is I realized so many Chicago barbers don't follow me. Mm. And it's weird because uh, when I go to places, people will bring Chicago barbers up. Yeah. And I'll be like, no, I never heard of this person. I'm like, yeah, dude, he's a beast. And they'll show me their pages yeah. and, and I'll look for them. And they don't follow me. But they follow so many people that are that I know, right? In your so circle, like, yeah. So it's like. I don't know what it is. You can't get love in your own city. You cannot get love in your own city. I oh, never and it'd be that. your own people too, bro. It'd be your uh, own people. And I never got that. And it'd be funny to me. But the crazy part is that I can, I don't care. Like I don't pay attention to any of that until people bring it up to me. And then I'm like, oh. All right, now question. Do you feel like you get more love out of the black, white, or Asian community? I get love Latino? outside of Chicago, period. It doesn't even. No, Maybe because when you go like. South America, right, Los? You dude. Like so much love. We're going to Mexico for the first time. And the, the amount of DMs. Of mm. people that are going, bro. There's a guy in LA. The guy that I did that big old head, that whole headpiece. He's thinking about flying to Veracruz just to see the class. Wow. And I'm over here like, bro, but you're in America. <laughs> like I could do stuff here all the time. If you're gonna fly all the way to Veracruz, you could just. But that's an experience though. That's true. Yeah. Man, you gotta <laughs> catch me close. for that one for sure. If you want to pick with low, it's gonna be ten pesos, okay? Because mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. uh, man, it's gonna be lit. I'm excited for that, bro. Yeah, Mexico's gonna be dope, man. But. Other than that, like, look, if if you're at a show, and and I sp I think I speak for a lot of people that are that are top educators. Um, if you're at a show, the less weird you are, the the better. We're we don't care if you come up to us and you want a picture, if you want to talk to us, if you want to pick our brain, that's all cool. But understand this: have a limit, because most of the time when we're at shows, if you see me walking around, I'm not just walking around. I'm either trying to get to a, B, C, I'm looking for a model. I got things going on. And I think a lot of people make the mistake by stopping you at a hair show and then they want to interview. Yo, Los, you mind if you check out my Instagram? Can you follow me? Can you check out my work? Can you critique my work while you're here? Can you give me an example of how to grow and be like, and it's like, there's a time and a place for all that, bro. I can't do that. But if you want to stop and just share a few words and get a photo or a quick convo, that's all love. We don't care. We, we really don't care. But... I think the, the key to that is if you treat us like normal people, we'll treat you right back like normal people. But if you come at us and you're very hyper, very and geeked, and you're trying to do all this extra, we're going to try to cut it short with you guys just to be like, all right, cool, man, I appreciate the love, and then walk away. And this is me speaking from a lot of people that I've seen go through the same thing. Um, we're just people like you guys, you know, the only difference is we're probably just working a show, we're on platforms, we're educating, but, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of fire fire people that haven't made it yet, and that's the future. There's going to be people that soon, my day's going to go, and the next person's going to be the next best thing, and, and that's what it is, and this is why I don't treat nobody like they're lower than me. I don't make students, and I'll sit there and I'll give them words of encouragement to, to because so, to my knowledge, he might be the next big dude in like five years. Right? Who knows? How many how many times have we heard those stories where like, oh, you know, I met my hero and he 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 didn't want to take a picture with me, but now I'm doing better than him and all that. But guys, what's the time check? Oh wow. shit, we got cut. Have it. Ruben's <laughs> yawning. Ruben is yawning. What's up, Ruben? He's tired, man. He you yeah. know, Lowe's got to go to. Uh, I got to go to the right concert. Now. We just finished up, but guys, um, if you guys did tune in, um. And check this episode out. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, we did two internal podcasts. The next one, we're going to have some fire guests. we just been chilling. But Chill vibes on this uh, windy, cloudy. Yeah, Wednesday. literally. Tornado watch, tornado warning day. <laughs> but with that being said, guys, in the cup podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we're going to let Ruben take a nap now. And, yes, sir. Uh, we'll see you guys there. Episode 11. Let's go. <laughs>